Hi everybody, welcome to Dram Daddy Whiskey. I'm Dan and tonight we're gonna name the best Larceny Barrel Proof release of 2022. But first, we're gonna review the latest of the Larceny Barrel Proof 2022 releases. Larceny Barrel Proof C922. Larceny is a brand of weeded bourbon by Heaven Hill Distillery. It's actually called Johnny Fitzgerald Larceny. And John Fitzgerald is the same Fitzgerald as the old Fitzgerald that Heaven Hill is famous for. Their famous weeded decanter series bourbon. So this is both the same mash bill and from the same distillery as old Fitzgerald. It's called Larceny because legend has it that John Fitzgerald, a treasury agent back in the day, would help himself to samples from the best barrels in Heaven Hill. And his favorite barrels supposedly were the weeded mash bill. And by stealing them, he was committing an act of Larceny. Larceny Barrel Proof has been coming out for a few years now. It follows the same release pattern as Elijah Craig Barrel Proof, three times a year, with the first release supposed to be in January, the second supposed to be in May, and the third supposed to be in September. A, B, and C releases to indicate the first, second, and third of the year, and the second digit indicates the month that it's supposed to be released, while the last two indicate the year. So C922 is supposed to come out in September of 2022. It hit my area a lot later than that. Let's pour one up. Larceny Barrel Proof had a pretty rough start, in a lot of people's opinion, including my own. The first couple years of releases tasted really dark, extra bitter, a little too nutty, and they just weren't my jam. Things started to get better in 2021, but they did lean a little bit into the nuttiness, which isn't particularly my thing. 2022, though, is when just about everyone admits that Larceny Barrel Proof really started to come into its own. I loved the A release this year. Most folks liked the B release even more, and I enjoyed that one too. And people are calling this C release the Weller Killer. You hear that all the time about a new hot weeded bourbon release, but people really do seem to like this one. On the nose. Whew. You get the proof. It's super sweet. It smells like thick caramely syrup. Oaky caramely syrup with a bit of like a peanut shell or like sawdust that comes in too. Probably a little more peanut shell. Some cinnamon on there too. I don't always get cinnamon on weeded bourbons. I know a lot of people do. I usually don't. But this one I definitely do. And it's got a touch of an almost sour funk to it that I pick up on some weeded bourbons as well. But overall, this smells like a really dark, rich, but sweet bourbon. A little fruity too, it's getting a little fruity, maybe a little brighter the more I nose it. I'd still say pretty dark overall. Lots of strong brown sugar on that one too. It smells like a great bourbon, a lot of classic bourbon notes with a little bit of those classic wheat notes as well. On the palate. Mm. Oh wow. It's really sweet and then it's got this dusty note to it that's pretty cool. Alcohol burn isn't too bad. I should have mentioned, this is a 126.6 proof, 63.3% ABV, which I believe is the highest proof of the Larceny releases this year. But you wouldn't know that just from drinking it. Yeah, so that sort of peanut shell note on the nose comes across as a bit more of like a dusty note on the palate, which I like a lot but it's still sweet, uh, more on the back palate than on the front palate, which is a little unusual for most bourbons that I drink. Still very dark notes though, a little leathery, that oaky, semi-nutty, dusty note that I mentioned. And there's some sweetness there. Not so sweet that I'd say it's like a syrup or anything like that, but enough to keep the dark notes from being overpowering or to dive into anything bitter. This is not a bitter bourbon at all, which is nice given that it has dark notes and dusty notes to it, that it, it steers clear of being bitter. Not all bourbons do. Another sip. Caramel, brown sugar, hint of like a sour cherry note on there too. Small, small hint. And it leaves you with a bit of a oaky, cinnamony finish. It's quite good. Larceny Barrel Proof, they really did it. Every 2022 release this year has been great. The whiskey in this glass, what score are we gonna give it? It's a great bourbon, and I'd give it an 8.7. I like this a lot. It is a bit of a conundrum though. Every flavor note I've picked up on with this bourbon is one that I think could fall under the umbrella of being like a quintessential or a classic bourbon note, or a quintessential or classic weeded bourbon note. But there's still something really unique about this. 
feel like most weeded bourbons these days, they tend to be on the brighter side, or if they do dive into like darker notes, it's more chocolatey or toasty, and it's sweet in that way. This is different. This sits on the dark side of things and still is sweet, but it, it straddles the line. It doesn't go so far as to being like chocolate, but it also doesn't dive head first into bright fruity notes. It lies comfortably in the middle in this way that's just really nice and pleasing. This is a sort of bourbon where you don't have to be in a specific mood to drink it, other than a mood to drink bourbon in general. There's not any night I can think of where this would seem like not a great pour. And the grade on this release, what are we gonna give it? You know, your mileage may vary on finding these depending on where you live. Where I'm from, they're not terribly difficult to find. The biggest issue in finding any Larceny Barrel Proof for me, and I'm in Washington State, is that we get these releases usually two months after the intended date. I think I did get this one in November or December, which was like right when it came out in Washington. And depending on how the distributor is stocked on other Larceny Barrel, barrel Proofs, they might not order these for a while. So every now and then there's a particular release in a year that is really difficult or almost impossible to find in my state. But that's not the case this year. Every single one of these releases for 2022, and I think at least the last couple for 2021 have been pretty easy to find. And the price really can't be beat. You're gonna pay 50 or 60 bucks for this MSRP. Heaven Hill really does well with their Larceny Barrel Proof and Elijah Craig Barrel Proof at keeping the quality high these days for Larceny and the price really fair low compared to a lot of releases. So for the grade on this release, considering everything, you know, the whiskey, the price, all that stuff, A plus, wasn't hard to find, priced really well, great bourbon. There's not really a whole lot more you can ask for. But is this the best Larceny Barrel Proof of the year? Let's find out. All right, all poured up. I'm not gonna blind these since I just did the review. I'm just gonna taste through them, talk about what I pick up and compare and contrast them a little bit. We've talked about C922, let's go to A122. The nose. It's not as dark as the C release. It's a little more fruity. And it's a little more subdued. There's some caramel and brown sugar there, but it's not as in your face as punchy as the C release. It's almost like a sweet, uh, like one of those strawberry cream savers or something like that. There's like a little bit of that going on in here too. Let's give it a taste. Yeah, that strawberry cream saver note hits you right up front. And then it gets into some spice on the back, a really strong corn note, like sweet corn on the back palate as well. And a touch of that sour note that I pick up on some weeders. Yeah, second sip, it's definitely sweeter, definitely a little bit fruitier. That corn sweetness really hits you hard in the back though and is maybe a little bit drying. So maybe it's a little bit of like a dusty note there too. Uh, it's a tad astringent, but it's a nice contrast to the, the sweet creaminess up front. I really like this release. B522. Harder for me to pull notes from this one. Definitely get the corn, definitely get a little bit of that sour wheat note. Might straddle the line a little bit between the brightness of A122 and the darker notes of C922, but it's a little hard to tell. It's just really subdued on the nose. You know, it's a bourbon, but it's hard to dive that much deeper into it. I don't know. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Okay, it's pretty buttery on the palate. This, this is the brightest, actually of all three. There's no dark notes in here, no leather, not really a lot of oak. It's just super sweet, super straightforward, like candy. Like if you if you made a sweet oak candy or something like that, that's what this is for sure. Okay, second sip, get a little more of that oak. Not as astringent, not as oak forward as the A122, but it's there. And that's sort of it, like strong brown sugar sweetness up front, and then a little bit of the oak with a touch of astringency on the back. And maybe like a hint of like a raspberry blueberry mix sort of sweetness, lighter on the blueberry for sure, more like a red fruit raspberry sort of flavor, 
but the, the fruitiness isn't like super amped up. It's just sweetness a little bit in that vein. Brown sugar on top. This is a good one. This one might be the easiest to drink of the three, which makes a little bit of sense because it's the lowest proof of the three at 123.8. And the A release came in at 124.4. C release was around 126. So, I mean, it's kind of negligible. They're all pretty close to each other within like a percentage point or two. And back to the C batch. Okay. It's definitely got the best nose of the three. It's amazing, it's rich, it does smell more syrupy now after coming after those ones. Okay, yeah, this is pretty good. On the palate though. Darker, maybe a bit more complex. It's got more spice on the back. Hard to say whether it's astringent or not. Okay, so took a couple more sips and all things considered, C definitely has the best nose. B is definitely the easiest to drink. And A has this sort of peculiar note on it that stands out among the three. It's a little funky. I know for some folks it's a little off-putting, but I really like it. it. Makes it stand out. And so for me, I think the best Larceny Barrel Proof release of this year was A122. I'm definitely in the minority on that one. I think most folks would rank that the last out of these three. That that one note, I think some people might pick up as being a little too like ethanol forward, but I really like it. If you have a chance to buy any of these three, here's what I suggest for you. If you want an amazing nose with great classic bourbon notes, something that's quintessentially bourbon that you could always rely upon to have on your shelf and drink any day, I'd go with the C batch. If you want a barrel proof bourbon that's still easy to drink and very sweet, the B batch. If you want something a little bit different, if you want to take a little bit of a risk, especially if you haven't had a pour of it before, give the A batch a try. If you've got a favorite batch, let us know in the comments. What do you like? Which ones don't you like? Did you hate A122? Why? Let us know. Until next time, cheers.